Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, I'll just, uh, just a few minutes, Maharaj. Just, just almost setting up. Okay. Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastor Chadesha Tarani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaurav Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, dear devotees. Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, the Kuching devotees, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Indeed, we are very fortunate. Uh, to have with us His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinasa Nashim Swami Maharaj, a spiritual master of ISKCON. And today is the most auspicious day, the appearance day of Lord Balaram. Sri Balaram Purnima Ki Jai. Aye. So Maharaj is going to deliver his speech on the pastimes of Lord Balaram. So I humbly request all the devotees pay your attention to listen to the Maharaj class. And Maharaj, on behalf of Iskon Kuching, I take this opportunity to thank you, Your Holiness, for giving spare time with us this evening on this festival and sharing with us this Balaram pastime. So thank you very much, Maharaj. We are so grateful to you, Maharaj. So you may begin, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanjena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Prabhu, so thank you for the opportunity to give me a, a chance to try to glorify some of the pastimes and the mood of Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram comes as Dauji, as a big brother, right? Lord Krishna's younger brother, 
Lord, we say Krishna Kanaya, Dauji Kabaya. So Dauji, Lord Balarama, he came first into this world before Lord Krishna. He comes in the womb of Rohini, but first he came in the womb of Devaki because Lord Krishna and Lord Balarama are brothers. They were both sons of Vasudeva and Devaki. So Lord Balaram appeared first in the womb of Devaki. While they were in the prison house of Kamsa, Lord Balaram appeared in the womb of Devaki. But after seven months, then it was arranged that uh, Yoga Maya would transfer Lord Balaram over to the womb of Rohini, who was another wife of Vasudev. Vasudev had several wives. So Rohini was another wife. She was living over in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. She was living there for her safety, to protect her from Kamsa's atrocities. Because Vasudev and Devaki, they're in the prison house. They're suffering, not very pleasant. They were in chains. And Rohini was there for over in the Gokula, very quietly, discreetly staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj. But it was arranged by Yoga Maya that Lord Balaram was transferred into the womb of Rohini. So mysteriously, Rohini becomes pregnant and she gives birth, of course, to Lord Balaram. Now, Lord Balaram is the elder brother of Lord Krishna. Why did he come first? Well, previously he came as the younger brother. As the younger brother, he was Lakshman. And as Lakshman, he was serving Lord Ramachandra. Lord Ramachandra was the big brother, and Lakshman was the younger brother. So Lakshman was always trying to make nice arrangements for Lord Ramachandra, but Lord Ramachandra would not allow him. Lord Ramachandra would always complain. And so it became very difficult for Lakshman to serve Lord Ramachandra because he's a younger brother. He could not do very much to serve Lord Rama. He was not allowed to do very much. So he thought in the future incarnations, I'm not going to come as a younger brother, I'll come as an older brother. And that's one reason why you see Lord Balaram as the older brother of Lord Krishna. Another reason is that he also wants to make arrangements for the appearance of Lord Krishna. So Lord Balarama came into the womb of Devaki and made all nice arrangements for, the appearance for Lord Krishna who's going to come there later. Devaki's first six children were you know, all killed by cruel Kamsa. And Balarama's the seventh child coming in the womb of Devaki. And then because he was transferred over to the womb of Rohini, everyone thought that Devaki has had a miscarriage, that the child has, there's been a miscarriage. Now Kamsa was not much worried about the seventh child because he knew the omen was that the eighth child is the one who's going to kill Kamsa. So Kamsa was very much worried about the eighth child. So when the seventh child was a miscarriage, he wasn't much worried about that. It didn't mean very much to him. So then Lord Krishna takes birth in the womb of Devaki. Balaram takes birth before that over in the womb of Rohini. And the two of them, after Lord Krishna appears in the prison house at Mathura, of course, then Vasudev brings the child over to Gokula, to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And there Krishna and Balaram are united and they can be together for their childhood pastimes in Braja. And they grew up there in Gokula in the land of the cows with Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda and they enjoyed being with all the gopis and the gopas and all the cows and they enjoyed being in the beautiful forests of Vrindavan. 
So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram spent first 12 years of their pastimes there in Vrindavan. Lord Krishna was going every day with Lord Balaram. Well, first of all, they were young children and the young in the Kumar stage, they just stay at home. But once they become old enough, for Krishna it was three years and four months. At that age, three years and four months, then he was considered, he, he could go with the cows, take the, or take the calves. And then later on, then six years, eight months, then he would be with the cows. And then at the age of 11, uh, what, six years, eight months, and another three, nine, ten. So age of ten, the tenth year, he's with the cows. And he's like that with the cows. It, the three stages, Komar, Poganda, and Kishore. Different stages of the childhood. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram were together there in Vrindavan, enjoying the beauty of the forest, and also meeting the different demons who came to confront them. Because Kamsa knew that some child is going to try to kill him. Some child is taking birth in Vrindavan, and that child is going to be the cause of his death. So Kamsa sent many different enemy, different agents. He sent his different men who were all powerful demons who could assume different forms, and they were meant to kill all the young children. Just like Putana came, and Putana came and she tried to kill baby Krishna. Lord Balaram, somehow he was not, there was no attempt made on him. The attempt was on killing Lord Krishna. Anyway, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they grew up together there in Vrindavan. And then when the invitation came for Lord Krishna to come to Mathura at that time, Lord Balaram also went with Lord Krishna to Mathura. And it was in Mathura they had the wrestling match. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram had to confront Kamsa's wrestlers like Chanura and Mustika and deal with them. Then after killing the wrestlers and then Lord Krishna killed Kamsa, then Vasudeva and Devaki sent Krishna and Balaram for their education and they sent them to Sandipani Muni's ashram. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram both went there to Avantipur, which is today called Ujjain. And they stayed there for six, 64 days. For 64 days they were there in Avantipur. Every day they would learn one of the different arts of the six. There were 64 different arts which were taught. And each day they would learn one and they would master that art in one day. So in this way, Krishna and Balaram were still together. Then Lord Krishna, of course, moved everyone to Dwarka. When Jarasandha was coming to attack for the seventh time, Lord Krishna decided it would be safer to protect the people, to, it would be safer for the people of Vrindavan as well as the people of Mathura if they moved the people from Mathura to Dwarka. So Lord Krishna transferred everyone in the night to Dwarka. And Lord Balaram also went there and stayed in Dwarka along with Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram is Dauji, he's a big brother, but he always has a mood to be the servant. He doesn't want to do anything. He, his mood is never to be the master, but always the servant of Krishna. And he serves Krishna in all the different rasas. The different rasas like Dasya rasa, Sakya rasa, Vatsauya, Madhurya. Lord Balaram is able to serve Lord Krishna in all of these different rasas. As a servant, Lord Balaram is performing many functions. Sometimes he will massage Lord Krishna. And sometimes they will be 
like friends and Balaram and Krishna will be together just equally, just like as the cowherd boys who play together with each other. And sometimes Lord Balarama will take a position like a, a guardian, like a, a senior over Lord Krishna, like Vatsalya Rasa. Sometimes he will chastise Krishna. And Lord Balarama also can sometimes take a form which allows him to enjoy the Madhurya Ras with Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram expands himself. For, Lord Balaram is the first expansion from Lord Krishna. We say actually there's no difference between Krishna and Balaram except in color. They're both Bhagavan. They both have all the opulences of Bhagavan. Lord Balaram is equal to Lord Krishna in every respect. But a difference is there in color. Lord Krishna is that blackish blue color like the rain cloud. And Lord Balaram is the white color. So Lord Balaram enjoys serving Krishna in many different ways. We said he his Lord Balaram is the first expansion from Lord Krishna. And then the the next expansion which comes from Lord Balaram is Sankarshan. And as Sankarshan, he's holding up all the different planets in the universe. But as he's holding up all of these different planets, each of the unlimited hoods of Lord Sankarshan are reciting and describing the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and they're glorifying the Lord, each of the mouths. And they're each re reciting and describing different qualities and different glories of the Supreme Lord. So Lord Sankarshan is the first expansion from Lord Balaram. And then Sankarshan also, we see that where it comes about from Sankarshan, you have the chapter Vyuha, where Vasudev, Aniruddha, and Prajumna also come, their chapter Vyuha. And from the form of Vasudev, you get the super soul, who is the Lord in everyone's heart. And also the different avatars of Lord Vishnu, who all appear in the world. Kurma, Matsya, Narsimha, they're all Vishnu avatars and they come from Shirodakashai Vishnu. So there are three Purusha avatars. They're all expansions coming from the, the Lord Vasudev. You have Mahavishnu, you have Garbhodakashai Vishnu and Shirodakashai Vishnu, the three Purusha avatars. And they're all serving Lord Krishna. And the wonderful thing is that the Lord, as Sankash, in his form of Sankarshan, he will take many different forms for the service of Lord Krishna. Forms such as the Brahman thread, which goes around the neck of Lord Krishna and rests on his shoulder. That is another form of Lord Balaram. And then also, the shoes of the Lord and the umbrella held over his head. And then the, the cushion which the Lord sits on and his asana and his bed, they're all different expansions of Lord Sankarshan, who is an expansion of Lord Balaram. And they're coming simply to give service to the Supreme Lord Krishna. So the, the different ornaments around the neck of the Lord, all of these different things, they're all forms of Lord Sankarshan, who's an expansion of Lord Balaram. And they're showing how they can, they're, they're taking pleasure in these different forms to give service to Lord Krishna. In the different forms as Vishnu, the Purusha avatars, they're facilitating the creation of the material world. So Lord Balaram is always in the mood of giving service to his big, to his younger brother, Lord Krishna. 
Although Lord Krishna is the younger brother, Lord Balaram enjoys serving him. Now, one of the nice pastimes where we see Lord Balaram giving service to Lord Krishna comes in relation to uh, it's in relation to Samba. Samba was one of the sons of Lord Krishna. He was the son from Jambavati. Lord Krishna had many wives. Jambavati, she was the daughter of Jambavan. And Jambavan, when he had met with Lord Krishna and they'd fought for some time, then Jambavan realized the identity of Lord Krishna. He realized that this Lord, that this Krishna is non different from Lord Ramachandra. And Jambavan, in the previous yuga, in the Treta Yuga, in the Treta yuga he had been serving with Lord Ramachandra and he had fought against the demon Ravan at the Battle of Lanka. So when he understood that Lord Krishna was not different from Lord Rama, then he surrendered to him and he offered by way of showing his uh, repentance, his, that, you know, he should not have been fighting with Lord Krishna, he had not recognized him, so he wanted to make up for it. So he offered his daughter to Lord Krishna as a wife. And so that daughter, that was Jambavati. So Jambavati had one son named Samba. She had several sons, but one son was named Samba. And Samba, Samba actually means one who's always with his mother. He was not very well behaved. He was a, quite a naughty boy, you know. So, you know, naughty boy, the mother has to keep an eye on him. She has to always watch what's my son doing. So Samba was like that. He was uh, a mischievous young boy. He grew up and it, after some time he wanted to get a wife for himself. So he heard how there was this one young princess, the daughter of Duryodhan, named Lakshmana, and she was having a Swayamvara ceremony. Swayamvara ceremony means the girl can pick whoever she wants to marry. So uh, Samba decided he would go to the Swayamvara ceremony. But when he came there and he saw all the kings who were there, he saw there were, you know, many different powerful kings and, you know, they were all better looking and maybe, I don't know. Anyway, he felt, he felt it's going to be difficult. He thought, the girl is not going to pick me for a husband. The idea is the girl could pick who she wanted to marry. And all the kings and princes, they'd come there. So Samba also came there, but he decided, he, he thought, this girl's not going to pick me, I'll just take her for myself. So, like, so Samba picked her up and went off with her. So that was, it was, uh, it created quite a stir and all the other kings and the girl's father and other kings, they all came after Samba. And there was a great fight. Samba was trying to take the girl away, but all of these kings came and they fought with Samba and they disarmed him and they took Samba a prisoner and brought him back, put him in the, in the palace prison. So after some time, news came to Dwarka. Narada Muni is like a messenger. He brings all this kind of news, you know, the unpleasant kind of news, news which we're not so happy to hear. Anyway, he told them, he said, no, you know, Samba has been taken a prisoner. He's over in Hastinapur. The Duryodhana has got him in his prison. He, and he explained what happened, how he tried to take Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhana, for a wife, and how he fought with them, but he was not able to defeat all the kings who had fought against him. So when Lord Krishna heard, Lord Krishna thought, I will bring our army, we will go there, we will fight them. 
So Lord Krishna was prepared to bring the whole Yadu army there to fight against the Kurus in Hastinapur. But Lord Balaram was there and when Lord Balaram heard, he said, no, no, no. He said, let me go there. I will go and talk to them. Lord Balaram, Lord Balaram explained that, he said, I'm friendly with Duryodhana. I taught him how to fight with the club. Excuse me. So Lord Balaram said, I will go there and talk to them because I'm, I have a good relationship with Duryodhana. I spent time with him and I taught him how to use the club. So certainly he said, I think I can settle the dispute without too much trouble. So Lord Balaram went there to Hastinapur. He traveled from Dwarka up to Hastinapur along with Uddhava and some other members, senior members from Dwarka. They all went there to negotiate to get the release of Samba and to bring also Samba's wife because now he'd, ha he'd touched Lakshmana so the girl would now be his wife. So Lord Balaram went there and when the, when the Kurus heard that Lord Balaram has come, then they were very happy. And Duryodhana especially arranged a big reception and they came out to greet him and to welcome him, to receive him. They were so happy. And Balaram was receiving the cordials. It was very nice for some time. The relationship was pleasant. But then it came out that Lord Balaram requested, he said, I know you have taken the son of Lord Krishna, Samba, a prisoner here. He said, I want you to re release him and bring also his wife. Bring the girl Lakshmana, that she's his wife now. So you bring her, I, have to, I want to take them back with me to Dwarka. So when Lord Balaram spoke like this, then Duryodhana became angry and he said, oh, just look, you, you Yadavas, you come here and you start telling us what to do. You people are like the shoes, but you want to be on our head. What right have you got to order us like this, to tell us what to do? We're not going, we're not your servants. Don't come here and tell us what to do. So when Lord Balaram heard these words of Duryodhana, then he, un he understood that he has to teach them a lesson. So Duryodhana, uh, Lord Balaram said to them, he said, he said you know, you, you people are just like animals. When an animal, an an, most animals, they won't do what you say. You have to use a stick with them to get to control them. You can see the people driving the bullock carts. They have a stick and they beat the cow on one side, beat the cow on the other side, get the bull to go left, get the bull to go right, get the bull to go faster. Not only bulls, horses also, things like that, donkeys. They need a stick. So Lord Balaram said, you people are like animals, you just need a stick. So he said, all right, I will teach you a lesson. And Lord Balaram took his plow. Now Lord Balaram, one of the names of Lord Balaram is Haladara. Haladara means the carrier of the plow. So he took his transcendental plow. And with this plow, he began to he began to tap the sides of the earth and he began to hit the earth in such a way that the whole Hastinapur palace began to move towards the Yamuna river. And when Duryodhana saw how the palace was beginning to move towards the Yamuna river, then he completely changed and he fell 
at Lord Balaram's feet and he said, Oh no, please, Lord Balaram, I was only joking with you. I just, I'm ready to bring Samba, I'm ready to bring the girl, no problem. But please don't knock the palace into the Yamuna River. <laughs> so he, he humbled himself and took shelter of Lord Balaram and then he brought Lak Asamba and the Giro Lakshmana and he gave a big dowry and in this way Lord Balaram brought them all back to Dwarka and explained to Lord Krishna how he had delivered Samba from the clutches of the Kurus. So he settled the dispute very nicely. He, he, he kept the honor of Lord Krishna. He saw that these people were being offensive to Lord Krishna by not following the instructions of Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram taught them a good lesson by going to drag the palace into the Yamuna. Another time Lord Balarama was using his plow was during, during the, uh, it, it was a time when Lord Balaram had been drinking honey. Lord Balaram is very fond of a beverage called Varuni. Varuni is made with honey and Lord Balaram likes to drink this honey beverage and sometimes if you drink enough of it, you can become intoxicated. So Lord Balaram had been drinking quite a bit of honey and he had become intoxicated. He began to speak to the Yamuna River and he addressed the, he addressed the Yamuna River and said, Yamuna River, come here. I want to bathe in your waters. You come here. So nothing happened. So Lord Balaram again addressed the Yamuna River, but still nothing happened. So then Lord Balarama picked up his plow. He said, oh, you're going to be stubborn, is it? I will teach you a lesson. I'm going to break you into little rivers. And Lord Balaram took his plow and he began to hit at the earth and to break the Yamuna River into little streams, little tributaries. Immediately, the goddess from the Yamuna River came out from the waters and fell at the feet of Lord Balaram and begged forgiveness. That she said, I did not know your true glories. Please forgive me. So this pastime is immortalized in the Gita Govinda and the Das Avatar Stotra of Jayadeva Goswami, where he's describing Lord Balaram's pastimes. He's describing how Lord Balarama broke the, was going to break the Yamuna River into little streams. Such is the power of Lord Balaram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now some, there are people who are devoted to Lord Balaram, just like uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam we read about Maharaj Chitraketu. Maharaj Chitraketu was a devotee of Lord Sankarshan. So, so he was as a devotee of Lord Sankarshan. He was able to get many powers. He got. He, got, he was able to meet Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is another devotee. He's also a devotee of Sankarshan. And that's why Lord Shiva wears the snakes on his body. The snakes on the body of Lord Shiva are forms of Sankarshan, who Lord Shiva worships. And so that Sankarshan, he is the expansion of Lord Balaram. Now, one important pastime concerning Lord Balarama is when the battle of Kurukshetra was taking place, Lord Balarama would not fight. He didn't want to get involved because he was friendly with Duryodhana and of course he was friendly with the Pandavas. 
So he thought, why should I fight? No, it's not, I'm not going to get involved in your fight. This is your personal fight. I'm not going to involve. Instead, Lord Balaram went to visit the holy places. And one of the holy places which he went to visit was Naimasharanya, the Naimasharanya forest. And at that time, all the sages had gathered there to perform sacrifice because they knew the Kali Yuga was going to begin. So Lord Balarama came through the Naimisharanya forest and all the 80 odd thousand sages were all there performing sacrifice, doing a yagya. And at that time also, someone was speaking. Now, when Lord Balaram came there, the person who had been elected to speak to the sages was Romaharsha and Sutta. <coughs> Romaharsha and Sutta was one of the disciples of Srila Vyasadeva, and he had been elected by the sages to speak to them and to guide them and to answer their questions. We know from the first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, questions by the sages. The sages had questions. So these questions were put initially to Romaharsha and Sutta, the direct disciple of Srila Vyasadeva. But when Lord Balaram came there, Lord Balaram entered into the midst of all the sages. All of the sages offered some kind of respect to him. Some of them folded their hands together in supplication. Some bowed down and touched their heads to the ground. Some of them stood up to welcome him. They all, in some way or other, they offered some kind of respect and honor to Lord Balaram because they knew him to be the personality of Godhead. However, Romaharshan was seated on an elevated seat and he didn't do anything when Lord Balaram appeared there. He didn't offer any kinds of respect to Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram considered the situation and he considered that actually this Romaharshan is not a pure Brahmana, he's a mixed birth. The mother was from the Brahmin, but the mother was from Kshatriya family, the father was Brahmin. Like that. He wasn't pure, he was mixed. So Lord Balaram decided that he's not humble. And he, Lord Balaram considered his mission in coming to this world that we that he appears in this world as described in the Bhagavad Gita. Paritranaya sadunam vinas chaya chaduskritam dharma sampartanartaya sambhavami yuge. In order to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants and re establish the principles of religion. So at that time, the Lord comes, he advents himself in every millennium. So Lord Balaram considered his mission. Although he didn't want to fight at Kurukshetra, he'd come there and he saw this Ramaharshan is proud, but he's sitting on the Vyasa sun. So he considered he's not really qualified. So Lord Balaram therefore took a blade of Kusha grass. He took one blade, one blade of Kusha grass and pierced the heart of Romaharsha and Sutta. So when Lord Balaram did this, there was some alarm by all the sages. It was a great shock to them. And the sages then said to Lord Balaram that, you know, you have killed this great person. We had, the sages told Lord Balaram, we had given him a benediction of having a long life and you have killed him. So we're just worried now what we should do because we had given him this benediction of a long life. So Lord Balaram said to them, he said, well, I'll bring him back to life if you want. 
But the sages said, no, 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 don't do that because you're, you're the Supreme Lord and you decided to kill him. We don't want to do any, we don't want you to change your, to ch we don't want to change your opinion. But what should we do that we give him the blessing? The blessing should be also, should be delivered. So then Lord Balaram said, then let that blessing go to the son. So Ramaharshan's son was Sutta Goswami. And Sutta Goswami, he became the next speaker in place of his father. After Lord Balaram had killed Ramaharshan Sutta, Sutta Goswami came and he took the position of his father. And he took that blessing of having the long life and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam for the benefit of the sages. So we see Lord Balaram piercing the heart of someone that was in the previous yuga but when lord balaram comes in the kali yuga he comes as lord nityananda and as lord nityananda he's so merciful the jagai and madhai who were so sinful and they they're so violent that they they struck physically lord nityananda but lord nityananda just wants to give them mercy Give them a chance. Let them remain. Don't kill them. Lord Chaitanya was ready to kill them, but Lord Nityananda told the Lord, No, my Lord, in this age we must be merciful. So a very instructive pastime. Lord Nityananda requested Jagai and Madhai to chant the holy name. And by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, Jagai and Madhai were delivered and became devotees. So this is the glory of Lord Balaram, wonderful preacher, wonderful devotee, wonderful servant, that he can render such nice service for the pleasure of Lord Sri Krishna. So Lord Balaram is also the Adi Guru. He's the original spiritual master. So it's very important for us to pray to Lord Balaram on this, particularly on this day, because by the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of the spiritual master, then there's only havoc on the path of spiritual progress. So the mercy of Lord Balarama is very important to all of us. So on this day, we've been worshipping Lord Balarama and we're praying to Lord Balarama that please be merciful to us. Give us the chance to engage in your service. We want to become your devotee. Just like Prabhupada explained to us how we could approach Lord Chaitanya, he said, you have to approach Lord Chaitanya through Lord Nityananda. And how can you get, how can you approach Lord Nityananda? We approach Lord Nityananda by engaging in the service of Lord Nityananda, by going to preach to people like Jaghai and Madhai and trying to deliver Krishna consciousness. So similarly, Lord Balarama, not different from Lord Nityananda, Lord Balarama is also very important to us. We have to get his mercy. <coughs> By the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. And by the mercy of Krishna, we get the spiritual master. So it's a very important relationship. Lord Balaram is the Adi Guru, the original Guru. We all have a relationship with Lord Balarama because we all have a spiritual teacher. We have our present Acharya, but the founder Acharya of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, in the form of Srila Prabhupada, 
And Srila Prabhupada is representing the disciplic succession and Lord Balarama is the Adi Guru. He's the original teacher. We learn from him how to serve Krishna in every position, in every respect. We can work for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. So this day is very, very important for us. This day coming before the appearance of Lord Sri Krishna. So uh, I think I'll stop there and we'll ask if there are any questions. Anyone has any questions? No questions, Maharaj. Okay, I, I was asked a question last night. I was talking to some devotees last night on a class and uh, one of them told me how in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 10th canto, second chapter, it says here that Lord Balaram is 14 days older than Lord Krishna. Now, then he asked me, he said, how is it we're having Balaram Purnima eight days before Janmashtami, when Lord Balaram is 14 days older? So I said, well, I, don't, I really don't know. I said, <laughs> I said, I'll try to find out from some other people who are more knowledgeable of these things than me. So uh, I did ask some devotees this morning, and we're talking about it. And uh, it turns out Lokana Swami had been asked some kind of question like this before, that uh, is, Bal is Lord Balarama eight days older than Lord Krishna? So Lokana Swami then, he, he says, well, he said, if you read the Brigu, is it, what is it? Brigu Samhita or something? The Brigu Samhita, he said, he says in the Brigu Samhita, that Lord Balaram is not eight days, but one year and eight days older than Krishna. So one year and eight days. So that, then I, I, I thought, well, it's really getting confusing now. Srimad Bhagavatam was saying 14 days, and our calendar is saying eight days, and Lokana Swami is quoting this Samhita, this whatever it is, they said one year and eight days. So I said, uh, we need to do some more research on this. <laughs> so, something interesting. You know, if you know anything about it, then please let me know. Maybe you can guide me. The other thing about Lord Rama, uh, well, when we chant the holy name, we chant the name of Lord Rama. Right? Lord Rama's... It, does it mean Ramachandra or does it mean Balarama? It, it can mean what, whatever you like. Do you want to worship Lord Ramachandra or do you want to worship Lord Balarama? It's up to you. And Jiva Goswami says that Rama can also mean Lord Krishna because Rama means the source of all pleasure and Lord, Bal, Lord Balarama or Lord Krishna is that source of all pleasure. So the name of Lord Rama can also refer to Krishna as well as Balarama as well as Ramachandra. And then Prabhupada asked the devotees also, who's strongest, Krishna or Balarama? So that was an interesting question. And then Prabhupada explained, he said, no, it's actually Krishna is strongest. And he said, look at the deities. Balarama is resting on Krishna. Krishna's holding up Balarama. If you see the Krishna Balaram deities, you know, the, the, the arm is there resting on Lord Krishna. So Prabhupada said, Krishna is strongest. So these are some little anecdotes concerning Lord Balarama. I know Burijan Prabhu, Burijan Prabhu, a very senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada very learned also. He's written some wonderful books on Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. 
and he was saying, he said, you have any problems, you have any difficulty? He said, go to Lord Balaram. Go to Lord Balaram and tell him. He's very kind. He's very merciful. It is said, the spiritual master is more merciful than Krishna. So Lord Balaram, he is the original spiritual master. He's very kind. So you have any spiritual difficulties? You're having any problems with your life at, at all? It's very good to go to Lord Balaram and tell him about it. And he's very compassionate and very kind. All right. So no questions tonight. So thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak some of the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. And I wish you all good fortune and I hope you all get the mercy of Lord Balarama. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the, the devotee raised your hand. Yuvati Sachi Devidasi. Oh yeah. Yes, what's up, Yuvati Sachi? Uh, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble business of Guru Chishila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Dev, my question is about uh, chanting the holy name. Uh, what, is, uh, uh, what should be our mood when we chant the name of Lord Rama uh, or, or Bala Rama? Maybe um, uh, sometimes devotees said that this is uh, three Ramas, Ramachandra, Parashurama and Balarama. And what should be our proper mood during the chant in the Holy Name? Should we meditate on Lord Krishna as the source of all avatars? All, uh, how, how to meditate properly at this moment? Well, it's, it's a question of who you want to worship. Do you want to worship Lord Krishna or do you want to worship Lord Ramachandra? Are you, more in, are you more attracted to the mood of Lord Ramachandra or are you more attracted to the mood of Lord Balarama and Sankarshan like that? Different mm -hmm. people are attracted to different moods. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is attracted so much attracted to Lord Krishna, you know, not everyone wants to be in Goloka and be in the, with the cowherd boys. Some people like to be with Lakshmi Narayan and be with the, in the Vaikuntha planets. So what is your mood? You know, you have to consider what the, who is your Adi Deva? Which deity are you worshipping? Which, which is the form of the Lord which is most attractive to you? Mm -hmm. So we meant it, we we'll think of that. But the mood is always service, to be the servant. To please engage me in your service. Mm -hmm. Okay, Guru Dev, yes. Uh, so uh, maybe most properly to meditate on Lord Krishna as the source of all avatars, all uh, like this. If, uh, if we if we uh, uh, if we worship to Lord Krishna, yes, mm -hmm. that's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Guru Dev. <coughs> Thank you very much for your answer. Okay. Happy Balarama Purnima Guru Maharaj, thank you for your lecture. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Kripa Sindhu Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much Maharaj, thank you very much. Uh, Hare. In, uh, beside your busy, busy schedule, uh, you spare time with us in the valuable time, spare Balaram's mm -hmm. pastime. And uh, it was wonderful to hear about Lord Balaram. A lot of things are there. As Maharaj mentioned, we can read, we can get more information in Srimad Bhagavatam the 10th canto about Lord Balaram. So, uh, dear devotees, uh, we'd like to thank uh, our Solinas, Bhakti Vigna Vinasana Swami Maharaj. So, let's offer our respectful obeisances to Maharaj. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya. Solinas, Bhakti Vigna Vinasana Swami Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. All right, dear devotees, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So continue with the rest of the program. We shall happy Balaram Purnima. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.